All right, Corsair K95 unboxing segment of the video. So you get some manuals, probably warranty card, yep. USB, keyboard, and the palm rest. Easy, right? We don't actually need to see you unbox the entire thing, guys, so just a tip to all the unboxers out there, please just get to the point. Thank you. All right, this is a typing test without any O-rings on the keyboard. So pretty loud. That's hitting it pretty hard. This is softly. And you can hear that the key is slightly scratchy. So it's not super smooth. Still pretty good though. And in case you care, that's what it looks like without the keycaps on. So the point of this is, of course, I'm going to put O-rings on all of them because I like quiet keyboards. So the reason I chose the Cherry Red is because you can have a smooth action. And if you don't want to type too loudly, you can do this sort of thing and there's no extra click. On the Barans, there's a slight click. So I don't really like the Barans as much, but they're still pretty good. Blacks are a bit too heavy to press in, too hard, like the actuation force is too much. And the blues are just too clicky for me. So reds, nice, smooth, they're just the ones for me. So these keys have overings and these don't. makes it a little softer to press. It's not so high pitch. And of course it doesn't bottom out anymore. I definitely like the O-rings better. Okay, I've done all the keys except the number pads, so here's a test. So as you can hear, this is just a bit softer. Uh, it feels better. This is a bit rattly and crackly still. I definitely prefer this side. So O-rings, big plus from me. Definitely put them on. Unless you like this sort of sound, then by all means, stick with that. All right, day two with the Corsair 95. I had to unplug it overnight because the LEDs stay on, I'm still trying to work out why. Anyway, I'm in BIOS at the moment, set to BIOS back here, and any key seems to change the brightness setting. That's not a problem, it's just weird. So anyway, we need to be able to switch the lights off at night somehow. Uh, it goes into weird, super colourful mode, so as this is in my room, that's not a good thing for me. Alright, so here's the keyboard in all its glory. I've been using it for a day now and I quite enjoy typing on it. For gaming though, I haven't really noticed a difference. Uh, I think the key presses might be a bit faster, but other than that, nothing discernible. But in Windows, I'm really enjoying this keyboard because you do have the media keys over here. So of course, volume, that's skip to next track, play, pause, backtrack and stop. Got the lock in here. The light modes off two, three. Uh, it's not very bright, but doesn't really need to be. You have all the profiles up here and record macros there. And these keys here, it takes a little bit of messing around with, but you can bind it to open folders. But you need to send it to opening a dot bat file. Uh, you can look that up online, or just ask me in the comments, and I'll tell you how it's done. So I'm really enjoying this keyboard for Windows. It's great. Still, I don't think it's worth the spend. Uh, it is the RGB lighting, I would say, that adds so much to the price. And it is red key switches. For some reason, they're more expensive than browns at my local shop. So all in all, I don't think it's worth the price, but hopefully RGB keyboards come down in the future. So the reason I spent so much on this keyboard was not just because of the pretty lights, uh, because I don't particularly care. I turn them off 
a lot of the time during the day, but during the night they're quite handy to have. And I don't usually leave them on this color cycling. I just leave them on standard colors because, I mean, how often do you even look at the keyboard? That's my point. I generally don't, but it's nice to have the lights just so I do know where the keys are when necessary. And the other thing is I'm going to keep this keyboard for a long time. This isn't something that you throw away after a year, so that's why I put more money into it. So, you know, I can have something quality that I can enjoy using and it's going to make my life easier by having all these extra functions. So it's going to save me time in the long run. So while the RGB lights are pretty pointless, the keyboard's quite a good design and I'm really happy with how Corsair is making their keyboards. It feels fairly solid and it's quite nice to use. So I'm not going to go into the software because I'm not very good at it. In fact, I'm not good. So I'll let you go watch the other reviews for that, but I will just say that they're right. The software is hard to use, but you can achieve a lot of amazing things with it. So Corsair need to have a bit of a look at a few things, but there's nothing major. Like they're just little things that you should improve. And especially for the price, you expect something uh, a lot easier to use and just something that functions a little better. Like in BIOS, this doesn't seem to perform right and I had to unplug and plug it back in and I'm still figuring out the settings on that. So it's a really good keyboard, but there are a few issues. It's not perfect. Just be aware of that when you're starting to use it so you don't rage quit on it. But otherwise you should enjoy your experience with the keyboard. It is really nice. And if you haven't checked it out yet, this is my website for The Heroes Fall, my book series. Go check it out. Pretty cool cover art that took me five days each to create. Uh, and you get the free ebook just with this link over here. Click, it'll take you to Smashwords and you can download it right here, EPUB, Mobi, PDF and a few others. So check it out, let me know what you think. Any questions or comments about the keyboard, just leave them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.